If anyone had expected a breakthrough for the moderates in Bosnia's latest elections, they'd be bitterly disappointed, especially in the Serb entity, the Republika Srpska. My guest this week here in Banja Luka is Mladen Ivanic, a veteran Serb politician who lost his seat on the state presidency to a hardline rival. Is Bosnia heading backwards into political deadlock and violence? Mladen Ivanic, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. It's been a rotten election, this, hasn't it? Campaign violations, abuse of public funds, intimidation. What's the matter with you politicians here? It uh, depends to which sort of the politicians do you speak. Well, I, I, um, I, I according to Transparency International, all three ethnic groupings committed violations, but things were especially bad here in the Republic of Srpska. Yes, but I was the opposition candidate, so I didn't have this access to the public funds, public use of this, and I think that from the opposition side the campaign was more or less very, very correct, and we did what we could here. So you weren't as corrupt as all the others? Is that what you're telling me? No, I said that we were not corrupted and that this was the main uh, issue on which we insisted in this campaign, unfortunately unsuccessfully. Why is there so much corruption in the elections here? I mean, your president here, uh, the man who beat you to the state presidency, he's been fined 6,000 euros by the election commission for hate speech. Yeah. He even threatened workers at at least one factory. So, but this is a question why? for him. Yeah, well, so, so why is this allowed? Why, why, this isn't anything new. This has been going on for years. Yes, of why course. Why haven't you stood up to it? We tried. called it out. We tried. We, we did whatever we could from the opposition side. In the previous elections, we even taped one single person who voted on six different polling stations. And we, of course, sent all these informations to the state court and everything, everything was rejected. Why? Because the majority of the institutions here are not interested for the fair and correct elections. Why? Because the majority of them are linked with the key personalities and because of that they do that. The High Representative reported earlier this year in terms of public rhetoric and respect for the rule of law Things have seen a notable deterioration. Uh, My know, question is why? In order to give you the answer, you have to understand that there are persons who didn't do that. There was no comment about my speech. I didn't say anything which is the hate speech. I didn't use the public funds. I didn't threat the people. I tried, and I succeeded that in the past, in a few occasions, to win even without doing like typical politicians here do. But you have held federal office yeah. in the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and even you were incapable or unwilling to persuade the power brokers in this country, in Republika Srpska in particular, to see Bosnia and Herzegovina as a unitary state. It's very difficult to say that Bosnia will be a unitary state. It is a unitary state. Bosnia is a state which consists of the two entities, which has its constitution and very clear responsibilities. During my mandate, I tried to protect the RS, but I didn't challenge the existence of the BIH. The Bertelsmann Foundation reported this year the current constitutional setup of the country is routinely questioned and undermined by politicians, particularly from the Republika Srpska and the main Croat parties. You saw this going on all around you, attempts to decouple the Republika Srpska from Bosnia and Herzegovina. But you are either unwilling or unable to do anything about it. Which was it? I will repeat again. I did my job during these four years in a way that I tried to protect the constitutional right of the Republic of Srpska without challenging the BIH institution, trying to make compromises. During my mandate... But you failed. No. During my mandate, I didn't uh, cause any, any difficulties at the state. You level. didn't, but Republic of Srpska caused a lot of, of difficulties, course, of didn't course. it? But there Endless are, uh, difficulties. Yeah, of course, Obstruction, but... intimidation, hate speech. Not all the time, but yes, there was all these cases. And that's the reason why am I uh, in opposition? Why am I against that approach? But you said, you seem to turn your anger against the high representative. You said last year, as long as there's a high representative in Bosnia, 
That means the country is neither mature nor capable of working on its own, and while that's the case, we can't expect any breakthrough on the European path. Of course. It's not the problem of having the high representative, the fact but that the conditions for getting rid of the high representative haven't been met here, have they? This is, this is the problem. To be very frank with you, I think 11 years ago there was a decision to close the office of the high rep by the international community already, which means that there were conditions. So it was that the case 11 years ago. And the but conditions then, went away. Then it turned in a very different uh, way and this, uh, everything failed. My it turned opinion, in a different way because my... people obstructed the processes, particularly here in the Republika Srpska. Look at the look at defense equipment, May for I instance. Say again, I really believe that this country can function, and that this is a possible under one condition or two. One is one condition is that all the sides accept the constitutional order of this country. So, as much as I accept the Bosnia and Herzegovina, my colleagues from Sarajevo have to accept the existence of the Republic of Serbia. First precondition. So, that th there is no fight about this. Second precondition, we have to be ready for the compromises. I show that I was. Are the others? I'm not so sure. What compromises came from the Republic of Serbia? I'm thinking of uh, the requirement to transfer all defense property into the hands of the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this was obstructed and resisted by the Republic of Serbia, wasn't it, to yes. this day? So the obstruction has been coming from here. Depends how, do you, hasn't how, it? how do you define the problem? This is a legal problem also. Who owned the property? Is it entity or state? And there is a big discussion because nothing else than the, uh, let's say, institutions of the BIH can have a property. BIH, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yes, because uh, you have a land, you have the water, you have everything. Everything is basically owned by the entities. This is the constitutional decision. The so high representative says it's blocked due to political obstruction. Of course, that there is also a political uh, different view on that. Who owned the property. That's the main issue. But you admit there's obstruction from this side, from the Republika Srpska. Republika Srpska has an opinion that this is the property of the RS. They are ready to give uh, the, the use of all the property for 99 years, but this is a basically political fight. These arguments go on and on and of on, course. and the essence of it is that Republika Srpska is resisting being part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, no. isn't it? No, I don't think so. Well, Milorad Dodik, who up until he's uh, unseated you, was the president of the Bosnian Serb Republic, still is, today at least. Yeah. He has been questioning the viability of Bosnia and Herzegovina for, for years. I can't be advocate for him. I will I'm say not asking mine. you to be an advocate, I'm just saying that it's coming I'm from just, this part I can, of Bosnia. I will protect the constitutional rights of RS, but I will not the challenge existence of the VIH institutions, and I will not produce any conflict which will have a difficulty. But I will protect the RS because this is my duty, I'm elected for that. None of this, none of this is going to help Bosnia join the European Union, if that's actually what you want to do. I don't think that Bosnia is more complicated than any other decentralized country in the Europe. This is just a mantra which is repeated all the time. If you have a readiness to make agreements, there is no problem within the constitutional framework. No problem if you don't have a willingness. There isn't respect for European if, values if, if here, you, if you don't, Mr. Ivanich. If you don't want to accept, uh, if you don't want to have a compromise, you will find uh, a way out even in the most beautiful constitutional solution. So the main problem of this country is readiness to make compromises. It's, it's to respect, for instance, the free press. There's no respect for the free press. No, I agree completely. There? I'm even more critical than you about that because I paid the price. Okay. I lost the election. So you, so you don't respect European do you, values? Do, uh, I, I personally very much respect. But, but you, you have, haven't managed you have to, understand to instill that, respect. For instance, I was not the guest of the public broadcasting service here for 15 years. I was not interviewed by the public service for 15 years. So if there is a victim of that approach, it's me. But I am against that approach. I'm doing my best in order to have a normal press like in any other country. 
So no respect for free press. Journalists are constantly attacked here. You called on the EU in 2016 to back more projects. You said that they should, if you like, showcase the benefits of membership, that EU membership is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. It was up to the EU to do that. It isn't up to the EU. It's not a beauty contest for the EU, is what, what? it? It's up, it's up to you, politicians, to sell the idea to your people. It's not the EU. The EU isn't campaigning to get you in. You are campaigning to get in. Of course, but it's, it is our. But my very clear message was, in order not to spend the money from the EU on a lot of different small projects, it's better to concentrate that on something which is visible for people. Not for the political elite, but for the people. Bosnia has had so, hundreds of millions of euros from the EU. In a very small, different project, which are not directly linked with the people, too much uh, oriented to the uh, legal framework. And I, my message was to send the message to the ordinary people in order to promote that idea, in order to have this by the people and not by the politicians. But with all the problems here, with all the intimidation, with all the corruption, with all the hate speech, with all the anti-press movements that are taking, have been taking place here, what have you got to offer the EU anyway? Why should the EU take uh, you in? There is another option. I completely agree. If you see in that way, then it's better to isolate this part of the world and to leave it on its own. So that's your recommendation to Brussels? No, this is not my recommendation. My is different. It's your your recommendation is to leave this part no, to I'm isolate just that. It up to you. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you that we have to change the whole society here, which is not so easy. On the other hand, you have to understand that this society was in a war 25 years ago. Hundreds of the people, or millions displaced uh, persons. You know, you have to understand that this is not the most beautiful society. We need some sort of the patient and we need some sort of the support. And that was my idea. If it's wrong, okay, it's wrong. The EU is worried about your connections here with Russia. Their growing influence in this region. The European Parliament called on your authorities in April not to pursue an independent foreign and security policy which might undermine the state level policy. Why do you undermine the state level? Why, are things, why, why is Russia so welcome here? Uh, there is this friendly relations between the people. But I don't think that Russia is so much involved in here. Russia doesn't want Bosnia to join the EU, does it? No, as I know, the clear message is, yes, EU is not the problem. NATO is maybe the problem, but not the EU, as I know that. And you're heading towards NATO membership. You have the, you have the membership action plan, which you've uh, accepted, haven't you? Uh, this is the decision of my predecessors. And but you accepted like a, it. Like a legal, legally a person who accepts the legal rules, there is no way to withdraw that, so membership action plan is not the problem. So you're half um, in and half out then? We, have, to, we have to fulfill all the previous obligations and I will not make any obstruction for that. When it comes to foreign policy, Mr. Just Ivanich. to say the final message. But my generation will not decide about the membership within the NATO. That is for the, some other oh, yeah. uh, generations. If so, you, if if you did join the EU, you would never support sanctions against Russia, would you? Depends. Really? Yeah. You would be prepared to support sanctions if against Russia? If there is Russia? a very clear message and if there are the benefits for this country, maybe. Oh, so you, you, you would want something in return for no, it? No, You wouldn't stand no. on principle? This is a way of give me the, the chance to answer. If there is a very clear argument that this is something which is illegal, normal, Based on the arguments. Okay, using chemical are, if weapons are, if in we a member are, state. If, if we are the members of the European Union, yes. But recently, in a recent uh, situations where we have very clear political, uh, let's say, support for the existence of the Republic of Srpska, when we are from the Russia more than from any other uh, country who signed the Dayton Agreement, and when, when we have a lot of benefits by opening the market of Russia for our products like uh, vegetables, fruit. You make and a choice. You make a choice. You have to make a choice. You can't ride two horses at the same time, can you? My, my if you question... Believe, if you believe that the whole future of the Europe is a fight between the Russia and the European Union, I won't 
I, I would like not to be in that, in that situation. My question is, would you vote to accept sanctions on Russia given that it has recently used a chemical weapon on the streets of a member state as part of an assassination plot in if, Salisbury, in Britain? If we would have, you vote to sanction Russia the, over of that? Of course, this is a, a question which is a very speculative. It isn't, because so it's been it proved is. that they did it. First of all, I don't have any, any evidence. I didn't see any documents. I didn't have any information, so how can you expect for me to say something about that at this? Sorry, first documents and then answers. Yeah, but you wouldn't do it anyway. I mean, it's been accepted that the, the people who went to Salisbury to actually carry out this killing have been identified. You don't know me then. Give me the answers and you, in the arguments and you will see my decisions. I didn't behave in the past on expected way. I did always what I believe is good and always to have the arguments. I made so many difficult decisions in the past which were not very much accepted by the people here. But if they were based on the arguments, I'm ready to take the risky decisions. Let, let's look at the decision. In September 2016, the Republika Srpska went ahead with a referendum, which many people have described as the most serious challenge to the state since the end of the war. A referendum on Republika Srpska's National Day. Yeah. The state-level constitutional court had already ruled your National Day unconstitutional. But you went ahead and did it anyway. Why? when you knew how provocative this was going to be? Uh, because I think that this is a very stupid challenge for the RS and this, exactly that. The day of Republic of Serbska to be challenged. Why? Because it's provocative. Why? Because the Republic of Serbska was born out of ethnic cleansing, wasn't it? So you are against the Republic of Serbska? I, I didn't say that. By no, the, by no. the, and it doesn't you, matter what I am. I'm simply you, you, asking you, you, you the you, questions. You, you, no, 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 no. You said that the statement. It's not. Uh, these, the, these are the arguments that are being put forward. So, so uh, in that case, can uh, you not see why it would be provocative to other people to go ahead can with you see, RS National uh, Day? Couldn't you see that this is also provocative to undermine the right of the Serb people to have a national day? And we see that this that national day. We see so the court decisions don't matter to you. As long as you want something, no, you violate no, the court no, decisions. No. You, the court decision said that this is it cannot be the day of Republic of Srpska. So my proposal, my personal proposal to the government here was just to change the law to accept the constitutional law, uh, the court decision and to rename the day. It's not the day of Republic of it is the day of establishment of Republic of You weren't so compromising when it came to the attitude to war crimes and war criminals here in the Republic of Srpska. The Serbs' denial here in the Republic of Srpska of genocide at Srebrenica in 1995, the infamous systematic murder of up to 8,000 Bosniak men and boys. This is a a pitiful attempt to rewrite history on the part of the Republic of Srpska, to pretend that it didn't happen. This is something which I tried not to be involved in these discussions. As but much you were as, involved. Uh, not so much. I said very clearly, this is something for the historians and not for the current politicians. Because if the current politicians are involved, this is always the political misuse of these victims. And by not commenting that, I'm trying not to misuse that. Is that not fair? What can I do more than that? Look at the attitude of the Republic of Srpska. In 2004, it accepted that the genocide had taken place. 2007, apologized for it. Earlier this year, it reneged on that and voted not to accept responsibility for the deaths of up to 8,000 people at Srebrenica. So all these are political machinations, but you're trying to rewrite history. This is my point. I didn't do that personally. On the other hand, you have to understand... You blame the war crimes you tribunal. To, this is not the... You blame the war crimes tribunal. You said it was just political. It was so much. Really? Why? If you, it, if you see the numbers of the years for the different ethical groups, you will see that, the, the, that there is a huge disproportional... Even if you... So if suddenly you, you're the victims, are you? No? Uh, there is a legend in this part of the world. Every side believes that... This side was a victim. 
But you ignore the fact that Serbs weren't just sentenced at the court, they were also acquitted. Serbs were also released early from jail. Serbs also pleaded guilty, didn't they? You don't mention the fact that the majority of the civilian casualties by far were Bosniak citizens, weren't they? Bosnian Muslims. According to the Documentation and Research Center in Sarajevo, 82% 82 of the civilian casualties were Bosniaks. 10% 10% of Bosnian Serbs. Is, is this was the decision of the Independent Commission or institute led by the Bosniak? This is an organization funded by Norway and others. Funded, but led by Bosniak. So you're saying it's wrong? No. I just said that the fair uh, numbers will be seen once there is independent commission based from three sides and international. You want it to be fair. I want to be fair. You want to be fair. Is it fair, then, to say that um, this court was just political, to dismiss it, that it will be remembered as a political court? It won't be remembered as a political court. It will be remembered as a court that tried to bring justice at the end of a horrible war. Of course, this is your opinion. My you... opinion is different. My opinion is, if you see how many years of punishment were delivered to the Serbs, how many to the Croats, and how many to the Bosniaks, you will see that it is not in accordance with the number of the victims, even if you include these numbers. There's a man called Dragan Nikolic, who was commander of a Serb-run detention camp in the municipality of Lasenice. He pleaded guilty yeah. to personally killing nine detainees, torturing and beating them. He doesn't feel the same way as you. He doesn't feel that the even though that he was sentenced what do you by think? the tribunal, he doesn't feel the same, because in a statement... How do you know how I feel? You said it was political. You didn't challenge that. that. My okay. impression is that the court was mainly and political. I'm saying he doesn't believe you, because in his statement to the court, he said, I've admitted my guilt. It should be clear to all of us that we are <coughs> a factor in this reconciliation. This tribunal also plays a part in it. He's more honest than you, isn't he? Okay. If you see so, it's so. Isn't he? Yeah. Srebrenica. Two courts decided it was genocide. Yeah. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Yeah. The International Court of Justice. In 2000... And you won't accept that in either. Two, uh, in 2004, I was in Srebrenica. Paying respect for the victims. 2004... It was basically 14 years from now. And I always tried not to be involved in political discussions about the Srebrenica. And if, if, if that not? I, but I will not repeat every second day and being asked, are you basically like Serbs responsible for everything? No, that, I will not say that. I will repeat again. I don't think that the politicians have to play the game with the victims in Srebrenica. And one, it's not playing a game, it's one, just admitting it. In one direction or another. Why not admit you know it and move on instead of rewriting history? Why? Because this history is going to follow you because, around forever. Because I, you believe, don't admit I believe that this is something which is, my approach is something which is useful for the normal life in this country. To forget about the past. To pretend no, it didn't happen. No, I didn't say that. But that's what you to mean. To say not to have a politicians to misuse that. One side which is always insisting you have to say that you are responsible. Another side who is trying to say no, there was nothing. This is my just an elaborate personal, way to get out of it. My personal it? approach, I don't want to be in that fight. My personal approach is this is something for the historians and they have to speak about that. Not we, the current politicians. Whatever we do, it's misuse of the How victims. convenient, isn't it? What a convenient way to get out of it. What a convenient way to avoid taking a principled stand, isn't it? Let's leave it for other generations, who yeah, you hope won't remember course, this. Of course, because... You hope they won't remember my any of this. My opinion here is that this is exactly for the f uh, generations in the future and not for the, those who were involved in this. Every side has here a victims, and to expect that the current generations who were involved in the war are ready to make a common approach to this war. This is so wrong that you cannot imagine. It will just reopen all the old differences. In Mr. Ivanich, the rhetoric is way up. 
in this part of the world. People are buying more arms. All sides are buying more arms. We're heading back into political deadlock. Is Bosnia going backwards into war? Is that what's going to happen here? How dangerous is it? I was. I thought in the past that there there is no way for that, because I thought that we don't have a politicians who will be so strong that they can uh, have people supporting them so strongly. I thought that we don't have enough weapons here for to start a new war, and especially I thought that the people are tired. And now of the war, I still believe just that the people are tired. But the first two, I'm not so. Optimistic like I was before. Vladimir Ivanovich, thanks very much for being on. Thank you. Thank you.